Hey everybody, welcome to Adventures with Peps, and today we are painting Baylor, the Evil Eye. He was the leader of the demonic sea-dwelling Fomorians, and I am slowly working my way through the Slain series, so it made sense to paint this beast of a character up. He is an old enemy of Slain, and after his death he was replaced by the even more evil Moloch, which hopefully, hopefully Warlord Games will release. I really hope they do. I need more slain figures in my life. But anyway, his special abilities were he had an eye that could destroy anything he stares at. And he's obviously not very good around mirrors because he'd shoot himself, which is quite comical. Now, as we can see, he was built on a giant stag model. I've not read the rules properly. I'm slowly getting around to slain. I'm actually trying to paint up a lot of figures so that... I can do a getting started series like I did for Judge Dredd and for ABC Warriors. I'm, I'm trying to line up a ton of projects, get stuff done, and then hopefully when the weather is colder and I move more inside, we can do some battle reports. But as you can see, I primed in white, nothing super exciting there, and I grabbed the dark wood to start painting up this magnificent stag beast. It is really an impressive model. Uh, I do have some gripes about it. I think Baylor is a bit flat. And what I mean by that is his pose isn't super exciting. He's such a cool character. Also wish we got him on foot, not just on a stag. I think that could have looked even more impressive. But as you see, I struggled to turn the camera off there. <laughs> I've got the base coat all done on the stag. And we can move on to the next colour. And the next colour is going to be Sand Golem. And we're going to get his saddle. And I'm probably going to hit up the stakes on the head that he wears on his shoulders. I just, yeah, something about his arm, his left arm that is just hanging at his side, not doing anything. It's a little bit disappointing. I would have loved to have seen a bit more of a pose on it. I don't know if it was a fear of having it do something. I don't know what it would do. It could easily be pointing at something. There could have been a separate piece that you glued on just to make that side of him look a bit more dynamic. Because at the moment, he's just looking rather flat, which is a real shame. With the sand golem drying, we move on to a pallid bone. Now, I love this color. It's obviously designed for skeletons, but I think it looks great as um, a horn color, so I'm obviously using it on stag horns. I'm also going to slap it onto the human faces. Um, they're meant to be dead, obviously, because they've been staked to his shoulder pad. But I think just adding this color will give it like a, a pale flesh tone. And I think that could work well with the dead faces. Through the power of edit, and that is all done. We can move on to the next color which is going to be the crusader flesh now this isn't a million miles away from the pallid skin tone or the pallid skeleton tone bone i'll get there in a minute pallid bone tone has a bit more warmth to it, a bit more brown uh it's mostly going to be going on the head of the is it a stag or is it an elk i don't know it's been a while since i've read that story arc it's a very weird creature i assume it's trying to show his dominion over nature and the creatures of Ireland. But it's, it's amazing. They did such a great model on the, st on the stag that the Baylor having very limited posing really brings out the fact that it is a very limited posed model. And then grab the Gravelord Grey. Now in the artwork, he has a bronze bodysuit on. I'm not going to do it for the tabletop. I'm just going to give him this Gravelord Grey armor. Maybe when we hit the glamour shots, he might have some metallics put onto him. But I'm not going to show you that step. That is purely your choice if you want to do it. So I'm not going to show you that step if I decide to do it. But I'm just going to make sure I go around covering all the plate mail in this. Sorry if my editing's a bit choppy with the voice. I'm coughing again. I don't know why. Uh... I guess summer colds, winter colds, they just all love me. So I'm trying to cut out wherever my voice starts to go croaky too much. 
and sip on some water. But yeah, this is going to take a while to go around with the Grave Lord Great, so I'm going to take this moment to say all the boring stuff like like, comment, subscribe. Make sure you're following along. If you want to join in with the uh, the Discord group and have a little bit of fun supporting me at the same time, feel free to purchase a cup of coffee in the sign up subscription below. Yeah, I've said it really low. It's like two Canadian dollars a month. It should be like. 125 a month if you're in the UK. I haven't said it high. I didn't want it to be high. It's just a silly thing if you want to buy me a cup of coffee. There's a couple of you doing it already, which is wonderful and I appreciate it. If you also don't want to get called out at the end, make sure you let me know and I'll leave you off that list as I know a few of you did not want to have your names called out. But yeah, here you go. I have moved on to the uh, the greenish putrid color that they have in the speed paints and just slapping it on the faces a little bit just to give them some slightly deader looking characteristics. I also then moved on to the runic gray which I'm going to use on the sword. Now if this was any other model that wasn't covered in plate armor I'd have used the Gravelord gray but because he is absolutely covered in Gravelord gray now I needed to have the sword stand out a little bit. So I've gone for the runic grey. It's very uh, Horus Heresy Space Wolf blue kind of colour to it. I feel I'm going to be using that soon on a model that's coming to the channel. And I think it's going to work wonderfully if I can get it on nicely. But yeah, this is the other problem. I should have left the antlers off. I should have painted everything and done the antlers last. Because they're in my way painting his body. We then move into the hardened leather. This is a slightly darker brown than uh, the sand golem, but not as intense as the dark wood. So I'm going to use it on the hair of the tribesman that he's killed. There was a bit of me that was going to stick some gingers in there, but I decided against it in the end. Uh, the only orange I have is the fire giant orange. I don't really think that fits well with these characters at least. Especially as they're now dead. <laughs> um, I'm sure I'll use it on some of the, the character models instead. But I'm just going to go around. I'm also going to use it on the fur edging of his saddle. Just to give that a bit more of a colour definition. That all done, we can move into the skin tone. Which I'm using Plasmatic Bolt. I really like this colour on my uh, amphibious characters, let's call them. I've used it on some 2000 AD movies. I'm using it across the entire Fomorian range. I really like it. I think it comes out beautifully on the model. It looks very aquatic in my mind, and that is the sole reason I'm using it. It looks beautiful when it dries up, so there's not actually much. He's got his hands, and then he's got his little head, which is tucked behind this bloody sword, which makes it really awkward to get to it. Because I don't want to hit the sword now that I've just done that runic grey. And if I do, I'm going to have to cover it up with some blood splodges. The next stage was really quick. It was just the blood red. And I'm picking out some gems on his greaves. And obviously the little dot on his eye lens. I think I'm also going to pick out the stag's eyes with him. I need to show that this stag has been manipulated and turned evil. By being ridden by this Flamorian. So... It's going to be a nice easy step, nice and quick, and we will jump into what will actually turn out to be the final step of this tabletop ready mini. Now the box art, the hair is very uninspiring, so I grabbed the Hive Dweller purple instead. It's going to add a real pop of colour. As I'm looking more and more at the grey bodysuit, I think I'm going to dry brush it with some silver. I'm not going bronze, because he's quite earthy looking, and I really don't think he should be. Fomorians are trying to control nature. So I feel like a bronze warmth colour is not going to work for us. But anyway, I'm going to do that off camera. And then you can see the final glamour shots at the end. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed. Cheers for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. And I'll catch you in the next video soon. Bye-bye.